we're here at the Floral Bird Sanctuary and today we're going to give you a very special treat. We have Solo, our peregrine falcon here. And Solo has been a resident at the Royal Bird Sanctuary for how many years now? He's about five years old. About five so. years old, yeah. Right, about five years, and he came to us as a baby. He has a very exceptional story. And <laughs> what had happened was that he and his siblings, they, had, they were in a nest as eggs, and the mom went missing. And the dad tried taking care of him, but it was just too much hard work for him to be able to do that. So we noticed that this was happening, and what we ended up doing was taking in the eggs and bringing them to the World Bird Sanctuary to hatch them and raise them. So what happened was that the first egg that hatched, the baby hatched, and she unfortunately didn't make it. She only lasted about 24 hours. The next baby that hatched was another one that ended up being raised and then put into another nest of peregrines because fortunately peregrines can't count and they didn't notice the extra mouth to feed and they took care of her. She ended up flying free. But the third one that hatched was Solo here and Solo unfortunately ended up having some health issues. So his beak is a little bit crossed and his legs are a little bit bowed. And for a bird that needs to be able to hunt in the air and dive and swoop the way that they do and then rip and tear their food, he wouldn't be able to survive in the wild, unfortunately. So while he's here, he gets all the food that he could possibly want. He doesn't have to hunt after everything or anything at all. And we <laughs> love him very much. But as you can tell, he likes to tell his own story because peregrines tend to be very talkative. Now, this isn't the only treat that we have for you. We also have a story that we're going to be telling. Sir Rocco and our naturalist Allison here is going to tell you about a falcon's tail for Sir Rocco. All right, hi guys. All right, Sir Rocco, a falcon's tail. Sir Rocco was born to captive parents at a propagation facility in South Dakota. He was trained in 1997 to work in the Bird Aircraft Strike Hazard Program. The United States Air Force developed the BASH program through its wildlife management program on airfields around the world. The BASH program trains falcons to deter other birds and animals from the vicinity of airfields to prevent collisions with airplanes. This program can reduce collisions by as much as 80%. Peregrine falcons are especially suited for this work. They are powerful, fast flying birds. Other wildlife consider them a threat. Sirocco used a special tooth on his beak to break out of his shell about a month after his <laughs> egg was laid. He was tiny, weighing about one and a half ounces. He was covered with wet, fluffy down and had big feet. Sirocco looked like a big, fuzzy cotton ball. He slept on his tummy with his head and neck stretched out. In the wild, peregrines nest on high ledges of rocky cliffs. Some will even nest in cities on ledges of tall buildings or bridges. Sirocco hatched and was raised by his parents in South Dakota at a propagation facility, a place that raises and trains birds of prey. Both falcon parents prepare the nest by scraping clean a small area of loose stones or sand, called a scrape. The female usually lays two to six eggs in these bare, shallow depressions. Peregrine falcons eat smaller birds, small mammals, and insects. Peregrine parents continue to feed their fledglings for a month or two after they leave the nest. Five to six weeks after hatching, Sirocco's fluffy down changed to real feathers. He began to practice flying by jumping up and down, flapping his wings. This is called ranching. Young Sirocco had practiced flying and was now a fledgling falcon adult size and ready to fly. Fledglings know how to fly without being taught, but must learn to hunt from their parents. Peregrines like Sirocco fly high into the sky, sight their prey, and drop into a steep, swift dive called a stoop, which can top 280 miles an hour. Birds and people can work together to perform jobs. These people are called handlers. When Sirocco was two to three months old, his feathers were fully developed and he was taught to perch on the gloved arm of a handler. He was trained for six to seven weeks by World Bird Sanctuary staff, that's us, to work at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. 
Sirocco's job was to scare away birds and animals from the airfield so they would not collide with airplanes. Peregrines are chosen for these jobs because they are powerful, fast-flying birds and other wildlife see them as a threat. Sirocco did what he loved best, soaring, chasing, and hunting. He would swoop, circle around, and call out to make his presence known. One day, while chasing a dove, Sirocco flew into a chain link fence and was injured. His injuries include broken wing feathers essential for flying. Oh no, what's gonna happen? It was discovered that although Sirocco could fly, his wing feathers had been too badly damaged and he was not able to maneuver well <laughs> enough to work at the airfield. Sirocco was cared for at the World Bird Sanctuary in St. Louis, Missouri. Sirocco worked for two years at Scott Air Force Base Airfield before his injury. He, is re he was retired to the World Bird Sanctuary to become an educational ambassador for his species in 1998. He traveled throughout the United States to take part in educational programs concerning the plight of peregrine falcons. Sirocco's name means desert wind. He lived to be 19 years old. The end. Thank you guys so much for listening. We hope that you learned a lot about Peregrine Falcons and a little bit about Solo. You can see that he's been very excited about this very nice weather that we have with the flapping and the spreading of his wings. So we hope that you enjoyed this and we do love to continue to be able to tell you guys these stories. So if you like what you saw here, continue to look on our Facebook. And if you have anything that you're able to donate to us, because we do rely on donations in order to keep caring for these birds, go to www worldbirdsanctuary.org and click on the give link. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.